Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara. Today, we are discussing the first book in our first fantasy series of the year. If you would like to see this in video format without ad breaks, you need to head on over to Patreon and sign up. We also have a fun after show available on Patreon. If Patreon isn't your style, you can head on over to the Spreaker app and get the audio only version of our after shows and some other exclusive content audio only. Don't forget, you can also join me and my two co-hosts over on the Book Clubs app for even more bookish chats. Please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is featured co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hi, I'm so excited to be here today. Woohoo! Tell Yay. everybody where they can find you online. You can find me on Facebook at Heart Full of Ink, on Instagram at Casey underscore Heart Full of Ink, or on my website, heartfullofink.com. Okay, so before we begin, as always with book chats, I'd like to remind you that we talk full spoilers here. So spoiler alert, you've been warned. Today we are discussing Serpent and Dove, book one of three, written by Shelby Marahan. The audiobook is narrated by Holter Graham and Saski Maravelt, published on September 3rd, 2019 by Harper Teen and Harper Audio. The hardcover is 513 pages and the unabridged audio comes in at 14 hours and 13 minutes. Casey, would you kindly share the synopsis? Bound as one to love, honor, or burn. Two years ago, Louise LeBlanc fled her coven and took shelter in the city of Cesarine, forsaking all magic and living off whatever she could steal. There, witches like Lou are hunted, they are feared, and they are burned. Sworn to the church as a chasseur, Reed Diggory has lived his life by one principle— Thou shall not suffer a witch to live. His path was never meant to cross with Luz, but a wicked stunt forces them into an impossible union, holy matrimony. The war between witches and church is an ancient one, and Lou's most dangerous enemies bring a fate worse than fire. Unable to ignore her growing feelings, yet powerless to change what she is, a choice must be made, and love makes fools of us all. Okay. So before we begin, Mm -hmm. I kind of want to just give some information. Yes. (laughs) Before. (laughs) So, all right, let's talk about Serpent and Dove. So Serpent and Dove on Goodreads right now, as of our recording date, is rated four out of five stars even. Mm -hmm. With 287, 398,000 ratings. Mm-hmm. So those are people not necessarily leaving a review, but they're checking that they read the it stars. and left a te- yes. Right. And I'm going to warn you guys, I deviate. I don't I don't mm-hmm. love it like the masses. And I've read this over a week ago. Mm-hmm. So I found myself reviewing it this morning. And upon further review, <laughs> my opinions have altered a little bit. Um, so just be forewarned. <laughs> I hate that. I, I hate that I, I, I finished so soon before that because it just, it's like a catch 22. So I mm-hmm. like when I'm able to like give some more thought on it and break it down in my mind a little bit and think more on it and look at it more critically. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I think it takes the instant fun out of it when I start yes. thinking about it harder. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So when did you finish? So I read this book for the first time two years ago, while drinking rum and sitting on a beach in Hawaii. <laughs> okay. And I loved it back then. And then okay, I, but I just so never to be picked fair, up. You had the perfect conditions. A I did. Beautiful environment beautiful. and an alcoholic beverage. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> like if I could recreate that again, I would. And mm-hmm. I kept trying to recreate that in my mind, but I was stuck in snow. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I never picked up the second one. Okay. And I always remember, like, I liked this book. And so I suggested it for our fantasy read along because I wanted to eventually read the rest of the series. So I reread it for a second time this month. And I don't love it as much, but I don't think I hate it as much as you do which I'm really excited about because okay. usually like 
what, like 90% of the time we're on the same page with stuff. And then that one ten percent of the time we are polar opposites. And I I love those conversations for us. So I'm going to just step back one time. I'm not going to say I hate it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say I have a mild dislike. (laughs) So it's not a full on hate. But it's definitely, I see a lot of the problems. It's definitely got some problematic parts that we'll dig into. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And I, and I fully acknowledge this is the author's first book. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm trying to give it some grace, hoping that she has some, learned some things and got some feedback in book two Mm -hmm. is managed better. But I guess, well, time will tell. We'll have to see. Yes. So, as we do, high level, when you first finished the book, what were your initial thoughts? I'm excited for the next book. I I enjoy this one. Like you said, it's a debut novel, so I'm picking up on issues, but also I'm giving her a lot of grace because I can see things where I'm like, I know you have read this book 10 million times and you are missing these problems because you don't remember if you wrote it in this draft or a different draft. And that just comes with my background in editing. So I'm, I'm giving a lot of grace for that right up front. Cause I'm like, Oh, I know exactly who you are and where you are in your writing. And you needed like one more good solid edit with an editor who was reading it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Not another repeat with the same editor with the same beta readers she just needed like one good strong edit but i'm giving her that grace because it was her first book ever published and i've seen a lot of first books that are much worse than this mm-hmm. so yeah no okay. i i love the character development i'm excited for the world building and what's happening next with the red witches but i'm going to probably agree with you on a lot of your issues and nitpicky stuff okay so when I finished, I thought, okay, sure. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But I was like, I don't know. I felt like it was a lot of pages to just seem like it kind of rushed to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was, I guess it was kind of exciting at the end, but I felt like there was too much excitement dumped in the end and not enough throughout the book. So, you know, I wasn't like super excited to jump into the next book, but I wasn't, I'm not dreading it either. I just, I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. I'm looking at the calendar. Like, when do I have to have it read by? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start like (laughs) one week before then. Yep. So I'm curious to see if I like it more. So that's kind of where my high level was. Mm -hmm. Um. To speak to the character development that you brought up, um, Mm -hmm. it was empty character development to me. Really? And so by that, I'm thinking about Reed specifically. Yes. I had a hard time with him because I felt like he reminded me of other characters that everyone shits on. (laughs) Like, for example, people shit on Edward Cullen. Oh, my God. And I feel like there's strong Edward Cullen vibes coming (laughs) off of him. I love this so much. You know, the jealousy, Uh the possessiveness, the I know better than you, the holier than thou attitude, the hard headedness and unwillingness to bend. All the negative character traits that everyone hates on Edward Cullen Mm -hmm. is Reed. To be fair, Reed doesn't watch her while she sleeps, though. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a joke. He doesn't do that. (laughs) But he does say, yeah, oh, my God, you're my worst enemy. Yeah, I'll fucking kill Mm -hmm. you. He is so aggravating, and I find nothing sexy about his character. Nothing is cute. Nothing. I'm like, I. it's important to me to for the male characters, when they start in one place and they finish somewhere else, 
I need to feel it. I need mm-hmm. to be on their team. Mm-hmm. I want to like them. Mm-hmm. And I want to root for the couple. And in this case, I'm like, ugh. Like, I don't understand why she loves him. And that leads to my first, well, I guess second yes. issue. <laughs> this was clearly set up as a, like, um, enemies to lovers situation, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And it's clearly set up to be a slow burn, I mm-hmm. think. But I think it failed in the transition of enemies to lovers. And by what that means to me is I I tried to go back and find the, where the the relationship changed. And I couldn't really pinpoint it. It was like one minute. I'm going to cuss everybody out. I fucking hate you. She's calling her him a sorcerer every day or all day. And the mm-hmm. next it's read. Oh, you're you're so gorgeous. Oh, God. Touch me, love me, I love you. I'm like, bitch, what happened? I mean, I miss the transformation. It's like, yeah, they had a couple of good conversations, but in those conversations, they were still bickering. Yeah. They still didn't agree. They mm-hmm. still had severe opposite opinions on how to treat people and how to it's crazy. Like yes. it's not enough to make me go from hate to love. And I'm like, where did that happen? So I would say it really, the biggest turning point was after he killed the witch Estelle and she had her little fainting spell and was passed out for three days. And he sat by her bedside and like fed her the ice chips. And after she woke up, she was like, okay, maybe you're not as awful as I thought. And then after that was when uh, Andre and Grew, not Grew, but Andre and whatever his name is, almost killed her. And then he broke in and didn't save her because she saved herself. But she's like, oh, my God, I almost died again. I need to have life affirming sex right now because death is constant and I need human life affirming connection right now. Well, Lou fell in love with him for the wrong reasons. Because all of those circumstances, while, yes, that was nice for her, Mm -hmm. it was under false pretenses. He still doesn't know who she is. So, yes, he's treating her kindly in these moments. And, yeah, the sex might have been good. But because Mm -hmm. he doesn't know who you are, how could you fall in love with someone who doesn't know you? That's why I'm like, I don't get it. Now, I would have felt like had Lou disclosed to him sooner it seemed like she was going to but she didn't but had she disclosed had the author chose to have her disclose sooner and have him hate her for a couple of weeks and then come around i think i would have bought that more than Mm -hmm. her just falling in love with him because he was nice to her a handful of times and the sex was good because as soon as he found out about her he like walks away he does i'm like jesus christ man (laughs) And she's all like, I love him, but I deserve this. I lied. I'm like, bitch, okay. I can't. So to me, I just don't, I don't buy it. It's some bull. And then at the end, I guess it's a little better. But again, the process of how we got there, it was like, oh my God, she's really might die now. Okay. (laughs) I guess maybe she's not that bad after all. And maybe I should go help her. It took him a hot friggin' minute to come around. All his friends were beating it into him, and he was like, no, I'm going to be stubborn. No, I'm going to be mean. Ugh. Poor, like, Ansel, you mm-hmm. know, he's like, did everybody know? Did you know? He like, well, yeah, yeah. I knew. <laughs> do. I just felt like Reed was such a douchebag i'm sorry it's fair i don't love him and even at the end i'm like yeah he's cute he carried her yeah you know he's doing like again he's doing all the sweet things for her but it's Mm -hmm. all out of context i feel like it's just his overriding fear of her dying that's Mm -hmm. overriding it he's not gonna be done with his you know i hate witches (laughs) we're not done no, which I'm hoping book two is going to like really deep dive into now that spoiler alert from the last chapter, he has magic. So now I he know. is a witch, unless they're going to call him a wizard, which I hope they don't I want to call him a witch. 
He's going to be denying it and suppressing mm-hmm. and self-hating and everything for the first quarter of the book, probably. Probably. Also, he just killed his father figure, so he's going to have all of that angst. He's going to be like, oh, I'm horrible. No wonder no one loves me. I'm shitty. I have a witch who is also a witch for a mother who is also a madam. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) And I'm a bastard of a king. Oh, God. (laughs) He's going to be he's going to feel like his whole world has tumbled. And I don't know. I think I'm going to be laughing because I I don't know. (laughs) i love this i love i absolutely love this so (laughs) from my point of view i did not hate him that much i don't love him he's not the best book boyfriend ever but i never compared him to edward cullen and now that you did that's going to be stuck in my brain forever and i sorry not sorry (laughs) (laughs) um i thought it was a very Like you said, slow burn, he was very set in his ways, enemies to lovers. And I appreciated the fact that it she truly tried to make it last for enemies to lovers. Like they are opposite sides, they're forced together in marriage, they're sleeping in the same room, even though he's being nice and sleeping on the floor. Like he wasn't an awful douchebag. But there were times when I was like, oh, my God, guy, get over yourself, like pull your head out of your ass. And I really appreciated every time she said that to him, because, yeah, that's what I was saying it, too. Mm hmm. And but, yeah. what you think about the marriage, like the forced marriage? Did you think that the grounds were legitimate or stupid? Oh, not at all. I thought it was so absurd. But I was like, all right, that's what the author, that is the trope the author wanted. And that mm-hmm. was the way she found it. Again, if she had just one good edit with me, like we could have taken this to perfection. But anyway, anyway, I digress. <laughs> I mean, like the irony of it, like, so it's really like, really religious christiany people Mm -hmm. coming down on people that are like bad quote unquote yeah and it's like you know how like the church in general i'm gonna say Mm -hmm. the church is a catch-all yes they're like oh men can do they're the head of the household they can Mm -hmm. do whatever yeah they can treat their women like shit you can log her in the closet and never think of her again yeah so why would a man beating up quote unquote on a girl ruin his life i don't quite get it like no it wouldn't just in the sense that she was a stranger if they if the church says oh no that's his wife he owns her it's okay that he's doing this they have they have these weird loopholes that really don't make sense if you ever try to think about it logically um, that has always been my problem with the church, but that is mm-hmm. a whole nother discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, it was f- a flimsy excuse at best, but given that, um, the archbishop was her father and apparently didn't want her dead. Even though he knew she was a witch and still wanted to kill witches, and I guess which he wanted to protect stupid, her. Though. But-, but how could he? Okay, so how? Okay, how could mm-hmm. he want to protect her? And how does she think being around a bunch of witch hunters could protect her when every time she performs magic, it has a smell? A smell. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there was a whole there was a whole thing about that that I'm gonna nitpick later yeah so the magic system is kind of weird and she's doing magical things offhandedly Mm -hmm. even when she was um with those two guys in that room when you know Mm -hmm. he breaks in and saves her and she's like oh it smells like i mean i just feel like yeah like she's used magic and then she comes out of the little infirmary like oh it's from the infirmary Mm -hmm. bullshit like all these people are well trained Mm-hmm. They would smell it on you. Except they're not well trained. They're just idiots they're running around with swords who think they're smart and know everything. But in reality, they don't know. 
they don't know a lot. And she tells him a lot. She teaches mm-hmm. him a lot, which is, again, doesn't make sense to me. This is your enemy. Why mm-hmm. are you telling him things witches can do? And mm-hmm. things, I just don't quite understand the motivation of that at this point so early in the game when you don't even like him. Why are you just trying to teach him that he's an idiot? Let him be an idiot. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I'm not going to defend her. Uh, that doesn't make <laughs> sense. <laughs> I wish it had come out like in some kind of way that the author was doing that to like, I, I don't know if she was trying to humanize witches for him, but it didn't work. Mm-mm. It didn't work. Well, it did at the very end because, you know, he went to go rescue her. But it it took 500 pages for him to finally see them as human. And even then, he's like, all the other witches, it's, he kept calling them it's. That, yeah, that was the worst. He did. Definitely the worst. He called them it's. And then he finally called someone a she. And they were like, oh, oh, heaven, the gates have opened. He said, it's Lou. He called Lou yes. she. And yeah. I was like, he's been calling her she the whole time. It would be hard to change it to change her to it. I know. I feel like he thinks she's the exception, not the rule. Mm-hmm. He still hates witches. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping next book is gonna be a really like topsy turvy deep dive into his psyche of like, well. Now your family is witches. Now you are a witch. Now you're being hunted and prosecuted just the same way you did this to all these other witches. Like, you need to have a come to Jesus moment, except not with Jesus, because <laughs> with not the goddess. Jesus. Right. <laughs> or whoever, whoever you want to start worshiping now. Oh, my God. The, like, the look on his face when he figured out who his mother was. He thought he was going to die. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it was because he was going to die because she was a madam or it was because she was a witch. <laughs> he was equally disgusted. Both. Both at the same time. <laughs> He's so hoity-toity. I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. You own a brothel. How dare you? How dare you sully yourself with bodily functions? Yeah, I don't like, um, I don't know. For Now, I uh, had the feeling that this was supposed to be a feminist book. Is it? Uh, yes and no. Because it's not, in my opinion. I feel like if she was going for it, she missed the mark. So let me, this, I'm going to switch gears just a little yes. bit. Because let me tell you the reasons why I don't think this is really feminist. Or I guess it's quote unquote what people say bad feminist, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, the author talks about the brothel, but there is one part she calls it a whorehouse. Mm-hmm. So I think it's shaming of sex workers. Yeah. And also, I think that there's even girl hate going on coming from Lou. Oh, definitely. Um, Lou hates, it's not Cecile, but Celia. Celia or something. Cecilia, yeah. And and it's not because she's the ex. It's because she's, she's so quote, pretty. And, and, right. Yeah. So unless you're kicking men's ass, you're shit. Mm-hmm. Feminism is supposed to be all women, right? Mm-hmm. All things. Yes. All women. How, how can you just say, well, you're soft and delicate. You're shitty. Yeah. I don't like that. I think it was supposed to be jealousy of like, I'm not good enough. Look at me. I'm dirty. I'm living in the streets. Well, she should have said that. Yeah, she should have. She should have. Yeah. Because I would have been like, oh, well, you shouldn't come be that hard on yourself. I would have felt Mm -hmm. different instead of her shit talking that other girl who didn't do anything. She wasn't a villain. She did nothing. She did nothing wrong. She literally did nothing wrong. Her sister was murdered horribly by witches. And so she told her boyfriend, Go like leave me to go fight the witches who killed my sister because she was deep in her grief, which Mm -hmm. understandable broke his heart. But then he went and married a witch, and when she cried, I was like, "How could you do this to me? You you actually married this stranger." He's like, "Yeah, and I love her now." So (laughs) goodbye. (laughs) Like I kind of feel bad for (laughs) Cecilia or Cecile or whatever her name is. Yeah. Like, her sister got murdered. She tried to do the quote-unquote right thing by breaking up with her boyfriend. And he just... He goes and dives right in and, like, what? Like, this doesn't even make sense. What? 
I yep. get it. I get why she's like disappointed and upset about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I just felt like with all of that going on and like how the whole themes of like the women versus the men, I just didn't feel like this was a feminist book to me. It it definitely felt like she was aiming for it and missed the mark. Because, mm. yeah, it was very much us versus them, but showing that both sides have good and evil to them, and both sides have been traumatized by each other. Both sides do bad things to each other. There is no right answer. There's no wrong answer. And it, it's very general. It yeah, didn't I mean, quite hit the mark. Exactly. I agree. Like, even when... Like, we talk about, okay, so, yeah, Lou marries Reed, and they have to consummate their marriage. Why? Why do they have to? Because Why? Christianity and, exactly. you know. Exactly. Bullshit. And then, women. <laughs> and she's like, okay, so she fakes it, right? She fakes mm-hmm. it, and they're like, okay, yeah, we did it. There. Done. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That did make me laugh. I was like, how much you're slitting your arm open? How much blood? And he was even like, they're going to think I murdered you with all this blood. I'm like, what is this supposed to be like? Why you got like, so much blood? Like, she should have pricked her finger. Her hand, or, yeah, prick her finger. Not slice her whole arm open. You're just bleeding all over the place. No one bleeds that much. No, and, nobody and this- does. And if you do, you are being murdered. You can't go to the hospital. So... <laughs> and then that's another thing. So Lou is supposed to be all um, more experienced, right? When it comes mm-hmm. to sex. And obviously Reed is not. So again, the fact that she just slits her arm like mm-hmm. that. Girl. Girl. Yeah. And then the sex scene. The one sex scene. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> So I have a question for you. Okay. Yeah. And in all the years we've done this, you always complain about the women being virgins. Mm -hmm. What did you think about him being a virgin? Like, was that better, worse, annoying? I didn't find it annoying. I think the character because he's so holier than thou. Oh, yes, absolutely. So it it fits. And so it didn't bother me. But it did kind of seem odd. So when they finally have sex together seems like he doesn't have to work that hard and i'm like you're a virgin you shouldn't know what to do like that and she was not- teaching him a few things of like this is how you touch me that like this is where the clip is but then he goes <laughs> and bites her breast and she's like oh god i'm like what the fuck i'm <laughs> like okay i i just um <laughs> i just I, <laughs> I just laughing. I didn't think it was sexy. I'm like, what in the hell is happening? And I just, I, I don't know. I guess <laughs> one, she hasn't had sex in a while, so like some pent up anything would get her off at this point. And two, she was almost murdered. And in books, in books, if you're almost murdered and you have life affirming sex, you get off like that. <laughs> like, apparently because it didn't take that, much that's, that's the rules of fiction that, that's the rules of book life i guess because i'm like this okay so it was kind of cute but i was like ah. <sighs> i guess the author kind of made it happen fast and it seemed like reed caught on really fast mm-hmm. he's a fast study i guess he is mr he virgin is. is a fast study <laughs> i mean to be fair like he probably has some pent-up urges too if he's 20 years old and probably never really touched himself oh god he should be like he should be done in two seconds i don't i i don't (laughs) think that would be fun experience for any woman because he'd be like oh i'm so sorry (laughs) (laughs) so i mean that doesn't really that that experience to me doesn't really hold up with being with a male virgin in my opinion. But I will say, like, there is something about her slowly corrupting him that I just love. Like, yeah. just, like, in a general oversense of how, like, you know, in the be- very beginning, she would say ass, and he would, like, get all red in the face, <laughs> and like, couldn't, like, couldn't handle saying? it. Mm-hmm. And then by the end, when he says fuck, and she's like, oh my god, Did am I dead? <laughs> Did oh you my curse? gosh, yeah. 
Like that yeah. was a fun thing to watch him just slowly <laughs> fall, fall from his eye horse. When you're around someone a lot, it, pe- you guys as a couple, you influence each other. Oh, yes. Even if you may not realize it, all couples do this. They all, after they've mm-hmm. been together long enough, they start taking on each other's traits. Yep. Yep. Good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just being around people like that. So, yeah, it's different. I I do like that. That was kind of cute about mm-hmm. them. But I have more complaints. <laughs> yes, okay. Let's take a quick break. Let's take a quick commercial <laughs> break. And while you guys entertain these commercials, head on over and check out the book review journal available right now. It's not too late to start your new year with a fresh journal. Links are in the show notes. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction merch store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, welcome back, everyone. Where should we go to next? I feel like I've been monopolizing, running off the mouth. I'm I'm enjoying this. I mean, I can start nitpicking. Um, So like one of you mentioned the smell with the magic earlier. Mm -hmm. And so there was the scene where her friend Bass was caught. Mm -hmm. And she decides that she has to rescue him kind of ish. Mm-hmm. But mostly save her own ass is what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. And so when they get caught afterward, you know, their their lie has holes the size of my fist, right? But the biggest lie, the one that really annoyed me the most, was the smell mm. and the bath. Mm-hmm. So that whole scene started with Lou in the bathtub with lavender bubble soap. You know, mm-hmm. it was a whole, it was a whole big thing. He mm-hmm. walked into the bathroom, saw her in the bubbles. Like it was a whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then she and Ansel went down to the dungeons or whatever, took Baz's memories. So he couldn't reveal that she was a witch to anybody. And then she and Ansel passed out. They woke up. She dragged him into the library where they were caught by John Luke and her husband read and they're like yeah well we were upstairs with all the other magic stuff so that's why we smell like magic right now mm-hmm. and i was like Mm-mm. no man i know i know this lie is supposed to have lots of plot holes because you know you just literally dragged yourself from the dungeon into the library you're confused mm-hmm. nothing makes sense but for the love of god he just found you in the bathtub you should right. not smell like magic. You should smell like lavender. Still. Yeah. It's yeah. been, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour since you were mm-hmm. in the bathtub. You would not smell like magic. You would smell like your bubble soap. But they're like, oh, no, we were upstairs in the magic. And I didn't teach her how to wash properly. So that's why she smells like magic right now. And I'm like, he's an idiot. Yes, but he's not that much of an idiot. <laughs> like, for the love of God. He's willingly choosing to believe it. I mm-hmm. think he just doesn't want to question. Yeah. Oh, so, sure. I guess it was, it was just one of those moments where I was like, "I know he's an idiot, but god damn, does he have any brain cells right now?" No, none. It seems like he has none a lot of the time. Even Ansel. Ansel should have been like, "Yeah, I mean." We were in the room at some <laughs> point. Up, like, we were yeah. upstairs and then we were in the room. And I don't remember what happened next, but like she took a bath, right? And so wakes up. He's like, he's like, how did I get here? What happened? <laughs> Poor dude has no fucking clue what's going on. <laughs> but it's like, what yeah, happened? we were we were upstairs at some point. Yeah, I don't know when that was exactly, <laughs> but yeah, sure, we were up there. <laughs> like if they had just reordered that scene or done it differently, or like, you know, she didn't have to be in the bathtub for yeah. him to tell her about bass and like all of that, but mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Mm. So what did you think about Bass as a character? I didn't care about him at all, I feel like. You weren't supposed to. He was yeah. the asshole ex. Like... Yeah, I don't know. I was just curious if you had any thoughts about him or any comparisons. No, he's weird. I feel like um, he was the one who they were um, stealing the ring together, Yeah, they took his jewelry. Yeah, he was in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like he was, I don't even, I didn't even think they were that friendly. Like, I felt like he, they had a mutual interest and that's as far as it went because he was, he's going to leave her ass. He's going to leave, he left her. Mm -hmm. and then he was totally i i don't know the fact that she felt she needed to wipe his brain because he would tell i'm like there's there nothing i don't feel any kind of way about him except for he's just more storyline i Mm -hmm. i don't know he's trash like a lot of the men in this book oh yeah no he's absolute trash i just thought it was a little interesting that he kept saying i will protect you and then like at literally the first sign of trouble he runs out the door to save his (laughs) own ass and then when he's gone he's yelling her name like a fucking idiot and i was like oh yeah no that's kind of what reed does when he's you know after he finds out she's a witch he's like i'm always gonna protect you i'm always gonna protect you get the fuck out yeah you're you're a witch you're you're not what i thought you were get the fuck out yeah that yeah that is similar between them they both kind of drop her Mm -hmm. at you know like that snap your fingers and they've done an about face on her but i kind of expected him to because there was something that happened like earlier where it kind of seemed like she couldn't really trust him like i can't remember what the scene was if they were like at that restaurant having coffee or something they were doing something and i'm like oh he can't be trusted and oh, yeah. I feel every like, scene with yeah. Bass was like, no, this man is not to be trusted. He he wants gold and he wants sex and, and he's going to save his own ass. Yeah. He did try to rescue her, but then he got caught and <laughs> like made everything worse. Just so, go away. Just leave. He technically just the ran same away. as Reed, but yeah, he should have just run away. <laughs> just run away. I can take care of myself. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's where I fall on that. No feelings. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I was hoping you might have another good comparison. I'm still, I'm dying over the Edward Cullen. (laughs) I I, think about that forever now. I mean, but it's blaring. It's so blaring, like how he's very, like, feels like he wants to own her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yet, I can't stand your ass. You're a witch, but. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Nobody might look at you or touch you or try to dance with you or nothing because mm-hmm. my because you're mine. I'm right. possessive. Even though I was just, you know, alone with my ex girlfriend and she was holding my arm and giggling at every word I said. Yeah, this du- constant double standard. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna sneak away and break up with her, but you know, I don't know. He's he gives me the ick. I don't. I, he gives me the ick. I cannot. Get, I don't get it. The author better do something in the next book to make him a lot more likable to me, or I. I'm just gonna be like bullshit. <laughs> Nothing he does, I'm gonna believe. Fingers crossed. I'm. Yeah. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for the next book. I think the best male character was Ansel, and he was only 16. Oh yeah, no, hands down, he was the best. He's so dorky and lovable and he's like oh my god somebody's listening to me speak and she she wants to hear me teach her about the history even though she really doesn't no like i felt bad for him a little bit like even like how she manipulates him with like singing that stupid big titty liddy song and he's like no stop it (laughs) he's like fine what do you want to do just stop singing that song i'm like oh my god poor kid poor kid but yeah, but he was the best. <laughs> that one scene, though, when she intro- is introduced to him and, you know, Reed says, oh, he's going to stay with you and he's going to, you know, and mm-hmm. then she starts talking about, oh, maybe I like him young. Here it is. I like him <laughs> young, though, quote, easier to train that way. And then she says, perhaps I'll give him his first kiss. No, I'll do him one better. I'll give him his first fuck. I'm like, girl, what the fuck is going on? Why are you doing that? Why are you saying that? Because she wants to get a rise out of Reed. She wants to trigger him and make him mad. And 
It's I just think so her cringe. ultimate goal was to like make him not have Ansel around her. Fail. But yeah. It was cringe and it was fail. It's like everything is so and I feel like the author does that with her character a lot. He she makes her so over the top. Like mm-hmm. with singing that stupid song mm-hmm. and saying these kind of things. It's so over the top. It doesn't hit the way it should. It's supposed to hit one way, but I just find it absurd. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's supposed to be funny or not. Like, I feel like there were definitely some comedic things that were happening, but I don't think it hit for me. Okay. Speaking of the comedy, did you think the comedic beats hit or or miss? For me, they were usually hitting. Like, it it could usually get a chuckle out of me. Like, when she was singing Big Titty Liddy. Like, that I laughed at because I have a sense of humor of a 12-year-old. So, like, I know. And I just thought in my head, what are you, 12? And you said that. Yes, I am. (laughs) Like, that's going to make me laugh. But I know it's not going to make everybody laugh. I'm like, why is she singing that? I kind of saw it as somebody who, and, you know, I had read this before, so I knew the ending. I knew the plot twist with the mother, but she had been so coddled for 16 years. She wasn't really allowed to go out and do much. Like, she could play with her friends, but no, not a lot of witches knew she existed until her 16th birthday. So she was very coddled. She had everything she wanted, but in a very secluded sequestered way Mm -hmm. and then you know as she's literally dying because her mother has slit her throat and she like gives up this life for that life with the weird loophole that's not really a loophole but okay whatever um Mm -hmm. uh i see it as somebody who like swings to the very opposite end of the spectrum Mm -hmm. so like the amish people when they're on their um is it their t- their month long journey? I forget what that's called. Yeah, I don't when, know. When when the Amish people come into America and like try technology for the first time, and all of a sudden they're like doing heroin and cocaine and going mm-hmm. crazy to the opposite of everything they've ever done. That's how I saw her character of like I have been so sheltered, and now I am going to do the opposite of everything I've ever done. I'm going to smoke because my mom said you can't smoke. I'm going to have sex because my mom says sex is bad. I'm going to, you know, say things that would piss off my mom, even though she's not here. But it's still that, like, internal um, got to piss. I have mommy issues. Uh, well, yeah, she has mommy issues. She tried to kill her. But yes, I think I would have wanted more about that for it to hit for me the way it hit for you like Mm -hmm. tell me more show me scenes from the past show me you know um and not tell me give me something to make me feel like wow she was really smothered although it seemed Mm -hmm. like when she was young she thought hey my mom loves me she gives me Mm -hmm. stuff i this i that you know yeah. And then she turned 16 and her world changed on a dime. Like, okay, mm-hmm. I went from being this princess to, hey, your ass yeah. is toast. <laughs> so, yes. um, I feel like I want it more. And even from the, the mother's point of view, the villain, I feel like she's so one note. Mm-hmm. I would have liked to kind of understand more. And I feel like just the fact that their land was stolen, it was so stupid to me. It was so surface. I needed a lot more for me to buy into why the mother would think it would be cool to kill her daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, It was so planned and calculated, too. It was like, I'm going to find this man. I'm going to have sex with him on this night because I'm fertile on this specific night at this specific time. Mm -hmm. Probably some witchy help, too. But still, like, it was very Mm -hmm. calculated. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping in the future books we get a little bit more backstory from her. Like maybe she watched her parents get murdered. Because they keep talking about how everybody has this trauma. But also like her story was just, I need to take all the land back. Like why? What, what, what do oh, you God. gain from this? And why did it have to be land? I don't know. I feel like that's kind of borrowed from African American history a little bit. Like African colonizing, <laughs> well, all colonizers. Because, yes. but I don't know. I just felt like she could have done something else, something else other than that. 
because meshing that against and I don't really want to be like that nitpicky person but like meshing that like oh they they stole our land they did this to us it just felt like I don't know and then to put that back to back with how the black characters are treated in this book I kind of was like okay am I supposed to feel bad for you or what I guess so but but also no and I I'm that was another nitpicky part for me too because like the witches yes we're supposed to feel bad for them but also they're very evil throughout the story Mm -hmm. they there's not a lot of redeeming qualities in any witch other than lou and even lou we have issues with but like estelle the the troop at the very end when they like come to do their little play they're all violently attacking the townspeople and trying to kill everybody and then again at the very end of the book when they're celebrating they're seen as very selfish and vain with Mm -hmm. the witches just like picking up men off the street and like oh you're so pretty i like your jawline come (laughs) dance with me you have to stand in the corner while i eat. you don't get food this is my party but you're just like my little pet here yeah so like were we supposed to feel bad for them i don't know because like like both sides are really bad and there's not a lot of redeeming qualities for anybody here yeah and then like how the author chose to tell that story through a play Mm -hmm. that was like really on the nose yeah literal, literal people are just standing around like is this real I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is how you choose to explain it? I guess? I- to be fair, the townspeople seem kind of dumb, just in general. <laughs> like- like, is this real? And they're all looking at each other, and even, like, the, um, what do they call themselves? The sisters or whatever? They're all mm-hmm. like, is that true? Did he have a baby with a witch? Is it true? They're all like, what? And then, you know, everyone looks dumbfounded. Mm-hmm. And it's so stupid. I'm like, I guess. But also, at the same time, at one point, Reed said he thought witches just had, like, a sexual reproduction. He didn't think oh they ever God. had sex with a man ever. And I was like, okay, so, yeah, maybe this play but that's another is thing. necessary. She's like, okay, so, yeah, when Lou says, well, they have babies, so what do you mean you know he says they're it she's like no they're women he's like no they're Mm -hmm. it she's like no they produce they they're women Mm -hmm. he's like no um they only have women babies so (laughs) i mean he's actually she's like what are you talking about they're boys (laughs) i mean it's like this whole Mm -hmm. fucking thing i just wish the author could have did that completely different it's just so weird I think she was more focused on the foreshadowing for his big reveal at the end. Like she wanted to really hit the hammer on that note to make sure you understood that yes, witches have babies and yes, it is possible for boys to be born, but absolutely they do not have magic ever. So don't even think about seeing a magical boy ever. Hint, hint, wink, wink foreshadowing that was just overdone that it it was overdone yeah and then the whole you know we just send the boys off usually you know we send them away yeah and then you know later find out that oh poor you know reed you were in the trash can oh (laughs) my god he was in the trash can (laughs) holding a very fancy ring and i'm just like and yet his mother has an identical ring yeah still on her finger and i'm twinning with the jewelry Why did the evil witch give this baby a ring if she just threw him in the trash can? And like, right. why did she walk into town and put him in a trash can if the witches are off in this mountainous land and you're trying to get she rid of a just baby? Throw his ass over a, a mountain or something. Yeah. And that's horrible to say. But if she wanted to get, she wanted to kill him, then why mm-hmm. would you? Go through the land. Let me put him in the trash can. Oh, here's a way Let for me him give to him a ring. Yeah, and and put him in the him. trash can. Yeah, it, like it was so Ugh, so stupid. So stupid. Yeah, that part was definitely. <laughs> I can't. Okay, I guess. Yeah, I'm saying I guess to a bunch of stuff because that's <laughs> that's how it was. I'm like reading it. I'm like, okay, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> I want to talk about how the author describes the black characters. There's like two. Hmm. So Coco. Yes. Is that on purpose? Her name is your name Cassette. But oh, why are you? I mean, but, but that that nickname is very. <sighs> That, that nickname. Yeah, that, that rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, Coco? Why are you calling her Coco? That sounds nothing like Cassette. Mm-mm. You could have named her Seti. Or Cass. Mm-hmm. Or, or Cass. Or whatever. Like, Coco? Or, I, Coco was... Uh, and like, yeah. okay, so also, so while I'm on that note, how she described her... I don't find the quote, but I wrote down what I remembered. So she was, she called her like, where is it? Brown skin, curvy with brown eyes and brown hair. I feel like that's all it was. But then she I mentioned think of- something about brown skin on her hands and then being covered by, I think it was white gloves. Yeah. And of course her unmanageable hair at different points. She talks about her unmanageable hair. Mm-hmm. Like was up and she was dressed like this. But comparison to like the other descriptors, like for Seely, beautiful, porcelain skin, raven hair. Mm-hmm. Like the descriptors are really different. Very vastly different. Yes. And the only other black person was another witch that was toward the end. Mm-hmm. And she go, she just says tall ebony witch. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Tall Ebony Witch. And she kept saying Ebony, Ebony, Ebony over and over and <sighs> over again. It was, whew. Yeah. And no one else got like, wh- and we just, you know, porcelain, obviously, mm-hmm. like, you know, but Lou's mother was described as very white and pale with her moon silk hair. But yeah, that was the only like really white description of a character. Moon silk. Porcelain. Uh, uh, yeah. Raven. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. The white people get. Mm-hmm. And then the other white people didn't really even. So uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's easy to gloss over that if you're not aware of it or mm-hmm. you're not looking for it. Mm hmm. But she could have did a little better job with the descriptors for the Black people. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. I don't know. (sighs) I I have lots of thoughts, but we can save that for the after show when we bring up the other issues. Yeah. So, I don't know. I have problems with that. It was very problematic. Yeah. I guess those, I feel like I hit all the high notes on my major issues, you know. Mm -hmm. like the whole feminist stuff how she treated the black characters um the treatment that the black characters got in the book as well as just like this whole patriarchy theme i just didn't Mm -hmm. love and it's supposed to be and at first i couldn't tell was this ya or not so i guess it's older ya technically new adult because they're both 18 19 um But it's still sold as YA just because if a woman writes a fantasy book, it's sold as YA, even if the characters aren't technically teenagers anymore. It feels YA at times, like how immature some of these um, characters are, even even in new adults. For these characters who have had such hard times, I expected them to act older. I expected Lou to feel older than what she was, and she didn't. Mm-hmm. I expected Reed to be not, I mean, even though he was raised like a certain way and he was a stick in the mud, I still expected him to seem older and he didn't. He seemed young. He seemed just as young as Ansel. Him and Ansel could have been the same age, in my opinion. I mean, I think that speaks to Ansel being more mature for his age. Mm-hmm. And like we said earlier, he was our favorite character. And yeah, I think he was better than read in some ways but yeah Mm -hmm. i understand what you're saying (laughs) (laughs) i wanted i just expected okay now this is gonna also sound very 
conflicting with how I feel about Sarah J. Mass. Like I've talked about some of her books in the past. I've mm-hmm. complimented some of her books. Mm-hmm. I read her stuff. I've also sh- talked shit about some of her books. Like her, we'll get into that later. But there uh-huh. are things I like and dislike about the world she's created. Mm-hmm. But I just noticed after the fact that Sarah J. Mass has a quote on the front of this book. Oh, yeah. It says, you, a brilliant debut full of everything I love. If right you open on the, the front. cover, it goes deeper. I didn't even read that. Brilliant debut. Sparkling. Yes. Absolute gem of a book. Bullshit, Sarah. I'm sorry. But I know why she did that because I was listening to someone else mm-hmm. and they said that if you go on to um, Shelby's Goodreads or something, she talks about how Throne of Glass, I think it was, or A Court of Thorns and Roses, one of those two are her favorite books. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, I can sense a relationship here. Probably. Yeah. I I would believe that. Right. And so, of course, you say good things about your friends. You could say that whole blurb without reading this book. Mm -hmm. Which also that makes me, because like I said, I am not a diehard Sarah J. Mass fan. Like, I really enjoyed Throne of Glass and I really liked Court of Thorns and Roses at certain points. Mm -hmm. So the first book I thought was average at best. The second book, like most people, it was my favorite of all of them. And it slowly started to disintegrate the further we get along. Mm -hmm. Her third series, I thought was utterly dull. And at the end of the second book, I stuck it through because there's this surprise ta-da at the end that makes you want to read the third book i knew it was something Mm -hmm. so i had i got to it and i will read the third book but she's not she is not like a top tier author she's a bulk author do you know what i mean like she's shelling out these big books with a big world and Mm -hmm. it's not the best thing i ever read it's Mm -hmm. popcorn yeah it's popcorn it's cotton candy you eat it it dissolves it's gone Mm -hmm. That's how this book is. It don't a- don't ask me eighteen months from now <laughs> all the details of this book. I'm not gonna be able to give it. Mm-hmm. So that's my two cents. If I don't know how much sense I was, I was kind of <laughs> rambling there. But that's just- no, I followed. I followed, and yeah, I mean, I haven't read any Sarah J. Mass yet. I will eventually at some point, I guess. Um, but yeah, for a debut author, and from the marketing sense, you want to get the big names on here so readers pick it up. And I'm assuming it's kind of in the same vein as Sarah with the quote unquote strong heroine who's not pretty and docile and meek. She's, you know, dirty mouth. She can throw knives around. She's. Mm. Yes and no, depending on what series we're talking about. Okay. But like so, yes, I, I feel the like are there. I feel like they she went Shelby went tropey with this book. Like this is a trope book. Yeah. And if you like Sarah J. Mass, I you might like this because I feel like it's in that same vein without having read it. I can't yeah. not yeah. be like apples to apples, but like it's all the same fruit. Or like you, it's it's all popcorn, it's all cotton candy, it's all in that same genre, in that same vein. Mm. Oh, correction. Shelby's favorite books include A Court of Mist and Fury, which is the second book, which I said everyone loves. <laughs> everyone loves the second book. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you. It is in that vein. But dare I say Sarah did it better because I mean, it is in the same vein. You do, you're right. Mm-hmm. There's a strong heroine. There is a overprotective, you know, masculine man, but mm-hmm. not in the same way. Right. Not mm-hmm. in the same way. But there are clear lines to be drawn Mm -hmm. between the two authors writing. I would be curious to compare this to Sarah's debut. Like, whichever book she wrote and published first, compare this one to that one and be like, okay, so first book to first book, who's the better writer? Let me see. I'm the better editor to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to look and see her books in publishing order. Let me see if I can find it. 
because I am curious to see what was the very first. So her very first book is Throne of Glass that came okay. out in 2012. And Throne oh, wow. of Glass series is about a female assassin. And yeah, there ultimately ends up being a love story, but it's like war. Mm-hmm. I feel like you can tell the progression of her writing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Authors always get better as they keep going. I did like that series. <laughs> Although one well, book I mean, was like, really good. The first, first book isn't always the best yeah. book, right? Yeah. Authors put the first book out and then they learn and they grow. And so I'm I'm hopeful that the next book will get better and that Shelby will solve some of these issues. And if not in the set, like I, I have hope for her writing career. For a debut book, yeah. this is good. And I did listen to part of it on audiobook. And mm-hmm. let me just say, oh my God, I, I hate that I'm about to say this, but the minute I saw that man's name, I freaking knew it. Uh-oh. So Holter Graham, he has this really nasally oh, kind no. of sound. And I'm like, something about it, I didn't recognize him right away, but as soon as he as soon as I saw his name, it clicked. He is the narrator for Alpha and Omega. By Patricia Briggs? Yes. Yeah, he narrates those audiobooks. Because, you know, a lot of that is from Charles POV. Yeah. Anna and Charles. Yeah. So he has this nasally, like, talk to the, talk to the, you know, the kingpin, kiss the ring kind of nasal voice. I don't think he is the best narrator. He's fine, <laughs> but some people might find his voice slightly annoying. No shade, just trying to be honest. And I did listen to all those Alpha and Omega books. And after mm-hmm. a while, you get used, used to him. To it. Uh-huh. You get used to him and you can adjust, but he's not the best. And that might have hurt this a little bit as well if you're listening only. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. And narrators can make or break a story. You yeah. know that better than I do, but they can make mm-hmm. or break a story. Yeah, he's very nasally. And, oh, I can't even try to act like I know his voice. Why I wouldn't can't they do get it. a younger guy, though? Like, he's he's 19. Why would you have an old man narrate his voice? I think that they picked the wrong narrators on both accounts. I feel like it's bad. That is bad. So, no, the narrators weren't awful. But I've enjoyed a lot better. And they continue to narrate all three books, the two of them. Oh, Maybe get the books from the library so you don't have to pay for them. Now, see, okay, so the last book club meeting, these were on sale. Oh. And one of the members pointed it out during our meeting. So I bought these fucking books. Oh, no. And yes, it was on sale. Their, Their paperback, it was a set. But I wish to God I didn't because they're going to be given away. I'm pretty sure unless something crazy happens and suddenly I'm in love with book two. Like, oh, my God. Fingers crossed. Good things can happen. Today, (laughs) these are being given away. But anything can happen. Anything can happen. So let's think positive. (laughs) Think positive thoughts. So that's where I sit with it. Let's, should we go ahead and rate it? We can rate it. Or do you have more do you, points? No, no, points? I'm, I'm good. We can rate it. Would you like to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I'm giving it a happy four stars because while you have very valid points, I still enjoyed it. And I am being very, very generous for this debut author who I wish to God I could just like sit her down at my in my business and be like, let me help you. That, that, that's what I want. I, I love stories like this, but I, I can push you to the next level. So I, I guess I'm giving it more of a, like a, I see your potential. I'm mm-hmm. falling for you despite your red flags and I'm falling for your potential. Mm-hmm. That sounds so bad. Oh my God. I, I enjoyed this. There were problems, but I enjoyed it. I feel a way about potential. Potential is great, but it rarely delivers. I think about like when you think about guys, you're like, yeah. oh, he has so much potential. Yeah, I'm I'm usually much more critical of men with books. I'm like, oh, you have so much potential. Four stars, five stars. 
<laughs> or I'm the opposite. And I'm like, I hate it so much. There is no potential. Oh my god! But no, I'm I'm giving this four stars. Okay, that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna. Okay, so I'm gonna share with y'all. So when I first finished this book, I don't know what eight or nine days ago, I was giving it a three. And today, when I started the podcast, I thought I was gonna give it a two. But then I thought maybe I'll just keep it at a three. I'm changing it. It's a two. It's a two. It's a two. I just, in my gut, in my bones, I just, even though we had a good conversation about it, you know, the fact that when I went back Mm -hmm. and flagged all these things and I was rolling my eyes so hard and I started being more critical of the book, I just... (sighs) Mm-hmm. No, that's absolutely valid. To be fair, if I had liked the story more, or maybe if I liked the characters more, I think some of the things I didn't like, and I've done this with other books, like, you know, you notice things, you flag mm-hmm. things, but you choose not to, to let it bother you. Yes. Because you love the character so much. Yeah. Or the story's so gripping, you're like, okay, yeah, I see these flags, but fuck it. It's so good. Yeah, yes. That didn't happen for me. So that's why it gets a two. I really want to turn it around. Maybe <laughs> I could give a four for the next book. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I mean, it's happened before. Like the first yes. time I read, I didn't, it didn't get a two, but the first time I read A Court of Thorns and Roses with a group, I rated mm-hmm. it a three and I gave it and I was being lenient with the three Mm -hmm. and my group hated that on that shit so bad it was Mm -hmm. horrible it was like taken to slaughter it was so shit on but then when I read book two I'm like oh my god what happened like wow this is a lot better and I think I came out of it with a four so I think I'm hoping that's what happens here something Mm -hmm. similar where like the second book is just better spectacular and i'll be on board so i hope if not so. it's only three books <laughs> it's only three books yeah all it's right three books. <laughs> <gasps> okay let's in there i mean my gosh book two blood and honey interesting title 536 pages in hardcover get ready Ooh. <laughs> it's gonna be a big one Maybe I should start sooner than seven days before the recording date, just in case shit goes well. Just in case. (laughs) Yeah, you need some some breaks between chapters. I need a buffer. Maybe I'll start 10 days before it has to be done. Uh, Okay, you guys, that is it. It has been a fun conversation. Thanks for entertaining my issues, Casey. I had fun. This is great. He's Edward Cullen. I'm I'm gonna laugh about that forever. I love oh my it. Gosh. Yeah. So if you are it. listening or watching on Patreon, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. If we see you in book club, I'm ready for it. I will defend my stance. I am ready. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. Yes. And if you're listening just um, on any of the podcast feeds, reach out. Let me know. I'm okay with you saying, Tamara, you don't know what you're talking about. This is why it's great. Defend your stance. Defend. Maybe you might change my mind. Unlikely, but you can try. You can try. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We're going to call it. Have a great one, you guys. We'll see you next month. Take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, please head over to Apple Podcast or Spotify and leave a positive five-star review. It's a simple action that makes a big difference. You can also like this episode on your favorite podcast player or share it with your fellow bookworm friends on social media. Joining the Shelf Addiction Patreon family is another way to support us. For as little as $2 a month, you can help our team create even more amazing bookish content. If Patreon isn't your thing, 
Consider becoming a supporter on the Spreaker app for just $5 a month and gain access to exclusive audio only content. You can find me everywhere, including Instagram, X, and TikTok under the handle Shelf Addiction. Join our book club of the same name on the book club's website and app where we discuss all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction Podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. Thanks for tuning in.